In a triangle, if one angle is greater than another, then the side opposite the greater angle is longer than the side opposite the shorter angle. And that's what we'll be proving in today's lesson. I'll mention this is Proposition 19 from Euclid's legendary geometry textbook, The Elements. Proposition 18 is the converse of this statement, which we proved in a previous lesson. In that lesson, we assumed that we had a side longer than another side and proved that the angle opposite the longer side is greater than the angle opposite the shorter side. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that, and we'll use that result in this proof, but I'll also show you how to do this proof without using that result. Again, that's Proposition 18 of the elements, the converse of what we're proving today. So let's get into it. Pretty straightforward proof, so I definitely recommend giving it a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. We're going to assume that the measure of angle C is greater than the measure of angle B. We want to prove then that the side opposite the greater angle, which is AB, is greater than the side AC opposite the shorter angle. We can say that the side AB subtends the angle opposite it, so it subtends angle C. Similarly, side AC subtends the opposite angle, angle B. So another way of stating what we're proving is that the greater angle is subtended by the longer side. One quick way to prove this result is by contradiction. We're trying to prove that AB is greater than AC, so let's suppose for contradiction, SFC, that AB is less than or equal to AC instead. If this leads to a contradiction, then the opposite must be true, namely, AB is greater than AC. So is it possible that AB is less than or equal to AC? Well, we can break it into cases. If AB is equal to AC, then we could mark that on this diagram. Here's side AB, we'll put a mark on it and a mark on AC to mark that they are congruent sides. But by the isosceles triangle theorem, if two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite them are also congruent. So that would mean the angle opposite AB, which is angle C, and the angle opposite AC, which is angle B, they are congruent. That's a contradiction because angle C is greater than angle B. That's our first assumption. So again, if AB is equal to AC, then these two angles are congruent by the isosceles triangle theorem, and that contradicts angle C being greater than angle B. So we know that this cannot happen. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving the isosceles triangle theorem. Remember, our contradiction assumption was that AB is less than or equal to AC. We see that AB can't be equal to AC, so what if AB is less than AC? Well, like I said earlier, we've already proven the converse of this statement, which told us the greater side will be opposite the greater angle. So if AC is the greater side, then the opposite angle, angle B, will be greater than the angle opposite the lesser side. The lesser side is AB, the angle opposite it is C, so that would mean angle B is greater than angle C. And again, that contradicts our assumption that angle C is the greater angle. So by the converse of this result, which again, I'll leave a link in the description to my proof of that, we have another contradiction. So we see there's no way that AB can be less than or equal to AC. So certainly AB has to be greater than AC as desired, and that's the proof. For the first part of this contradiction argument, we used the isosceles triangle theorem. For the second part of the contradiction argument, we used the converse of this statement. But if we wanted to, we could have just used the isosceles triangle theorem again. Let me show you how that would work. Again, after proving that AB can't be equal to AC, since it leads to a contradiction, we would assume that AB is less than AC. So if AC is longer than the side AB, we can find a point on AC, which we'll call P, 
so that the length of the segment AP is equal to the length of the side AB. Then, if we draw this segment from P to B, what we'll have here is an isosceles triangle. Side AP has the same measure as side AB. So then, by the isosceles triangle theorem, this angle, angle APB, is congruent to this angle, angle ABP. But then notice this angle, APB, is an exterior angle of this triangle, PCB. Then by the exterior angle theorem, this angle APB has to be greater than this angle C, and it has to be greater than this tiny angle PBC. In particular, we're interested in the fact that angle APB has to be greater than angle C. Again, that's by the exterior angle theorem, and I'll leave a link in the description to my proof of that. Now remember, angle APB has the same measure as angle ABP. So if angle APB is greater than angle C, then angle ABP is greater than angle C. And that's a problem because we know angle B is greater than angle ABP. So let's write that here, angle B is greater. That's because angle B consists of angle ABP plus a little bit more. And so this inequality tells us that angle B is greater than angle C, and again, that contradicts our assumption that angle C was greater. And so using the isosceles triangle theorem and the exterior angle theorem, we show that AB being less than AC also leads to a contradiction. And so again, we have that AB must be greater than AC. So in a triangle, if one angle is greater than another, then the side opposite the greater angle is greater than the side opposite the shorter angle. It's a handy fact, and that's the proof.